previously on Destiny. Guardian? Guardian? Eyes up, Guardian. It worked. You're alive. You don't know how long I've been looking for you. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost. And you? Well, you've been dead a long time. So you're going to see a lot of things you won't understand. This is fallen territory. We aren't safe here. I have to get you to the city. Hold still. Don't worry, I'm still with you. We need to move, fast. The Red War, Season of the Worthy, Beyond Light. These are but a few of the tall tales told spanning the years of Destiny's lore and history. As every guardian gazes towards the rooftops, terraces and botsa of the last city, there is most definitely more to this story than meets the eye. Welcome back, guardians. My name is Sam Lab. And today I'd like to talk with you about the next mini-saga that lies ahead of us, so let's get down to business. Last Friday, the mysterious key art shared by Bungie immediately grabbed the attention of many, myself included. It put out some interesting ideas narratively speaking, and one we have all wanted for an exceedingly long time. Into the Light will focus on preparing for the next battle in Destiny, and there is slated to be a lot of exciting things Bungie plans to share with the community during all three livestream reveals. To that end, my goal here is to take a deep dive and provide my best interpretation of this image, adding my own context as to where the story behind it could be sending Guardians next. A gentle reminder, everything surrounding this concept we discuss can be classed as speculation, and with six months between Season 23 and Final Shape, there are several running ideas which could explain the story behind this image. Destiny is a story and world full of potential. Today I'd like to encourage us to sit back and relax as we explore the potential of this expansive narrative while we prepare to enter into the light. The atmosphere of this key art sets an extraordinarily strong tone. The Hive and ancient pyramid ships have brought a fight to humanity, right on their doorstep. This wouldn't be the first time that the last city has come under siege though. One of the most notable features in this artwork is that of the Tower of the Last City, standing proudly in the background. A lot of Guardians, including myself, never really got to see the Tower in its full glory. It was once a true bastion which all Guardians rallied under, aside from the protection of the Traveller, and it stood as a beacon of hope for humanity. During the Red War campaign though, it was subsequently destroyed. Since the Red War campaign, this image is the first official time the tower can be seen fully restored, something many felt should have happened a long time ago. While it's still unclear whether the events depicted in this concept will happen, a prominent detail of this is the elephant in the room, the pyramid ships looming in the sky over the last city. This is potentially a recall back to the Red War opening cinematic, and the cinematic discussing what happens to the Traveller just before the Dark Ages in Destiny 1. A big aspect of Destiny's narrative has always been dealt with in reincarnated cycles. What I mean by this is how seasons have parallels, war mind expansion, Season of the Worthy, Season of Arrivals and Season of the Seraph are all interlocked yet contain story beats involving the same set of characters. This is one of the great subsets of Destiny's narrative team achievements and something you shouldn't miss. I'm speculating here but based on the enemy type we see in the background, the implications are potentially massive. Out of all the enemies of humanity, the Hive attacking the last city makes a lot of sense. Given the hierarchy of the Hive is in chaos, 
To me, this suggests a couple of things. The first is Ziva Arath. Since Eris Morn has mortalized the God of War, her presence has not been seen or heard from since Season of the Wish. However, there is one lore entry I could share with you. A conversation between Eris Morn and Osiris. An armament lore entry titled Worm Guard Strides. Have a listen. Report by Vannet Encrypted Router. E Morn Link NM001. Your findings are consistent with mine. The egregore festers where the veil touches, as if it projects a field across Sol. I could feel it when I took my tithing. Do you mean to map it? I could. But the egregore only shows us where the veil's influences has marked our plane in that past. The areas where the veil's influence currently holds sway are not so easily identified. This does progress some working theories, however. I wish I had been there to face Sabathun and Zivorarath with you. I would not expect you to endanger yourself. Is that so? How did it feel to face her? Like judgment. Long overdue for a moment. I was incensed to hear she was allowed to live. I was not pleased either. But if it is vengeance you crave, know that it has been exacted. I tore from Zivorarath what she tore from you. Good. And Savathun? She knows our true enemy. There will come a day when she meets your retributions as well. Yes. For now, victory over vengeance. It is inevitable, Osiris. She will turn on us again, and we will strike her down. So why now? Why a brute force attack on the last city? Your guess is as good as mine. Though if I had to take a wild guess, it could either be for revenge. The pantheon of the Hive has quite literally been shattered, and the Osmium siblings are at odds. Oryx is, well, lost for now. Zivorarath, for the first time in millennia, is weaker, according to Hive standards, and Savathun is still playing the game. She of all her sisters seems to be ahead in a way none have been able to fathom. There is another Hive sibling. From here things get a little more complex. Eris Morn has now joined the ranks of the Hive Anathema. She is after all part Hive, and by her entering the court of Oryx, by exploring Hive logic, she unknowingly or knowingly made herself part of the family. Zivu Arath knew this and it paints a fascinating potential tie-in for where Into the Light story connects to future events. Take a listen. I heard you Guardians got a lesson in sword logic today. You think you can defeat Zivu Arath with philosophy? <laughs> right. Let me show you something. Savathun kept records and I took a look at what she had on her sister. Got a recording from way back, just after you Guardians dropkicked Oryx into Saturn's orbit. Call it a primary source for your little research project. Our brother is dead. I will take my revenge as he sought for his son. Revenge? For what? The dead deserved to die. That's your own logic. Oryx was a hypocrite, and so are you. He loved us. He made of our death a study. And she, who has endured, who sharpened the sword of his defeat, has done the same. She will take up this mantle. When she is paired to her true shape, we will meet her on the bladed path. What a vain child you are. Or it spoiled you rotten. Not everyone wants to be like you. And you won't always get your way. I will test my strength against her brood, and she will prove our logic true. Do you see what you guardians did? Do you see what's happening here? Zivu Arath thinks Eris is one of them. 
some kind of heir to Oryx. That ritual of hers tied a pretty bow on that theory. This is all part of Savathun's plan. But I can't help wondering, what the hell does Eris think she's doing? I've made mention of this before. There is a strong possibility that something will happen to Eris Morn and the Hive siblings in the post-Final Shape story, Heresy, which is meant to have a strong focus on the Hive dynasty. By Eris using Oryx's logic, she entered the game, made a move on what is a royal family member, for lack of a better word. You could say that by doing this, she made a declaration of war. And as we have seen, Zebra Arath does not really take defeat very well, as she has made that her love language. What I mean by this is that she considers it love when war is brought against her. Additionally, there is one other reason for a citywide attack from the Hive. It could be to gain access to any number of hidden archive relics stored in the vaults of the last city. Take your pick, Ahamkara Bones, the Crown of Sorrow, or... Oryx himself. The list is endless, and what better way to sneak into the last city than with an epic distraction made to look like an invasion. The idea of Oryx being revived could be out of this world, given that his body was not destroyed at all. Adding another piece to the board does present interesting prospect on several levels, especially if he were to meet Eris Morn. There is a slim possibility that the witness isn't quite as incapacitated as we thought. Given the scope of power it can wield, it is probable that it may still hold control over the Black Fleet and some leaderless hive. You may have heard Bife discuss this several days ago. By now, we are all aware of the final shape story, how the witness has entered through the portal into the Traveler and is trying to enact its final shape which can only be fully achieved through the power of the light. The trailer for Final Shape already in alludes to another enemy faction, factions fighting against us within the Traveler, made up of the Vex, Hive, and Scorn, and a new enemy faction, Subjugators, birthed from the Witness trying to seize control of the Traveler. Given the scope of this fight and the number of allies we have, an attack on the last city would prove to be a useful contingency plan to get rid of the universe's last hope. I think at this point it would be foolish for the Witness to underestimate Guardians, given the number of those who thought they could rise above humanity and have been put down. We have speculated a lot in this video. So, I would like to plant our feet firmly back on the ground for a moment before we get too carried away. There is a strong possibility the moment depicted in this key art takes place sometime during the past. Picture the artwork through the lens of giving Guardians their first foray into the universe, during the first attack on the last city, when the Traveller and the Darkness first fought. This might explain why these Guardians are wearing what looks like older armor and wielding older weapons, and more specifically, sunset weapons. Savathun has been missing since Ikora let her go during Season of the Witch, so naturally suspicions will arise on her whereabouts, merely suggesting that the Witch Queen is somehow behind this feeds her with great power. She is always one step ahead, plotting, scheming, initiating another contingency plan for Guardians and the people of the last city to fall prey to. All we know so far is she has asked Imaru to continue keeping up appearances with the Lucent Brood. The strangest part about this is why not do it herself? It has been suggested that Savathun cannot return to her own throne world. This has not been stated in law officially. The truth is that creating a throne world requires a considerable amount of power. Power calls all power either of the light or darkness. This is where it gets interesting because Savathun's nature is cunning. To understand systems, this is what the Worm God Yule told young Sathona 
and where Sabathun derived the name Imbaru from, known as the Imbaru Engine, a system allowing her to gain tribute from anyone failing to understand her or her schemes. A new engine created to help her gather tribute, and we know that Savathun was keeping an Ahamkara egg hidden within the center of the Anbaru engine. We are yet to feel the ripples or effects of such a decision, but the engine gives Savathun the power she needs, and it continually feeds her, even without a worm. Even after Eris Morn vanquished Savathun and for a moment became the most powerful hive god in the history of destiny, this was a fool's errand to Savathun, and her engine would continue to amass tribute for her. Additionally, Savathun built the Wellspring in operation within her throne world, a primary source for distributing the light throughout the throne world, and to continue feeding energy to the light curse on Rolk's pyramid, imprisoned within her throne world. The Hive and Scorn have continued to fight over it ever since. Finally, the last thing I would like to point out is the darkness structures which are connected to buildings in the last city. Like buildings are being terraformed or forcefully conjoined to pyramid type structures. Although these hive are the only enemy race being shown in the key art, they are not exclusively the only darkness aligned race which the witness commands. You are aware of the scorn, vex and taken also fill the ranks of the witness. Ironically, Season of Defiance was the season that carried a similar tone, involving citizens of the European Dead Zone, EDZ being captured by Emperor Callus and his Shadow Legion. A story that the wider Destiny community felt was narratively disappointing in execution. The season ended abruptly with no explanation as to why people were being taken or why Amanda Holiday needed to die at the end of the seasonal campaign. One of the most important characters in Destiny's narrative was trivialized after establishing a connection with her since Destiny 1. As I have said before, we have seen a similar tactic used against the Last City multiple times, and with no avail, and yet we find ourselves staring down a possible seventh invasion. Along with the list of the Battle of Six Fronts, the Fall of the Iron Lords, the Battle of Twilight Gap, the Faction Wars, and the Endless Night during Season of the Splicer. It is safe to say that the people of the Last City have endured quite enough hardship from internal wars and attacks from outside sources. Even their faith in Guardians has been shattered with Guardians wielding the darkness at will. There we have it. An incision is on the horizon. And at this point, it is impossible to tell from who exactly. As I said earlier, there are multiple parties who will be vying for the opportunity to deal a deathly blow to humanity and wipe us out for good. So there's a little speculation for you on the eve of the first of three Into the Light live streams, starting on the 19th. Could it be Savathun, the Witch Queen, Zivorara, God of War, Fikrul, the Fanatic? or perhaps rogue hive leadership, or the fourth unknown disciple of the witness, whose thoughts can be found recorded within the Inspiral lore books. We will just have to wait and see. This is all I have for you today. I know many of us have been let down by Bungie, and I am aware you certainly aren't alone. But it's okay to be cautiously optimistic in the most balanced sense without spreading negativity. That stuff is not good for the mind or body. Trust me, I know. If you did enjoy the video, however, feel free to comment below, share your thoughts, like and subscribe. Click the bell to find out when my next lore video goes live. As I promised, this will not be the only lore video I have coming out, but depending on what we see on Tuesday's announcements, I may hold it back. Thank you for all your support and for those of you who have stuck around with me and continued to watch my videos. It truly means a lot. Life has gotten a little busy at the moment and it's given me the opportunity to refocus my time. I have quite a lot of backlog of videos to get through before the final shape and beyond. I will do my best to get these finished and out for you to enjoy before the expansion drops. Remember, 
that no matter what you're facing at this moment in time, you can do all things. Stay safe and Godspeed.